Hello YouTube, this is Ole Draco here, and um, this is the second update to my horror and thriller collection. Well, it's not an update, it's the second half, sorry about that. Um, right. Same thing for the first video as it is for this one. Um, if there's anything in this pile that you don't agree should be in here, then let me know, and I'll see how it looks in that category, and if it suits, then it will stay. If not, then... I don't know. <sighs> Let's get started, I don't want this one to be too long. Oh, the long time dead. I need I need to get rid of that glare. I'm sorry, is this this light thing? Oh, it doesn't help with the little red and blue one, but still. Uh, long time dead. Brilliant movie. Just to explain a little bit what it's about, I'm not going to explain too much. It's just about a bunch of friends who do a Ouija board. You can kind of guess everything else. Next one, which is a classic, which is The Lost Boys. Keith Sutherland, Corey Feldman, and Corey Haim. I don't like the other two. The other two suck. This is the best one. No matter what else. I know a film with Kiefer Sutherland. I'm sorry. I, I'm obsessed with Kiefer Sutherland. He is such a great actor. Which is Mirrors. I haven't seen Mirrors 2. I need to get me off. Fun home. Ouch. Sorry. This is kind of obsessive with the lights. But anyway, Mirrors 1. Uh, great, brilliant movie. Uh, scared the crap out of me. <laughs> um... I haven't seen Mirrors 2, I don't want it. Wait. <sighs> Stephen King, another movie. Uh, everyone loves this movie. It is Misery. With James Caan and Kathy Lutz. Haven't watched it. I can't actually say anything about it. Now this I have on DVD and on Blu-ray due to the fact that this is just a brilliant movie. You can... You can't not have it on both platforms. It is My Bloody Valentine 3D. Jensen Ackles, people, come on. Dean from Supernatural, how can you say no? I'm straight, by the way. I just think Dean is fit from Supernatural. Girls who watch it, you'll agree. Next is number 23 with Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey is brilliant. He does multiple roles. He's a comedian. He's a serious actor. He's a psychopath. He's randomly just crazy. This is a great movie. Next is One Miss Call, brilliant movie. Uh, I used to have the theme to, as my ringtone, and it used to scare people on the bus. They used to come up to me and go, why is your phone doing that? Uh, sorry about that, I have to pause. Um, right, next one is Open Graves with Mike Vogel and Eliza Dushku. Um, just to basically explain what this movie is about. Uh, it's like a horror version of Jumanji. Just to put it plain simply, but I do like the artwork on the case. Oh, the butterfly wings behind the sword, but it's like in the shape of the cross. It's pretty cool. Then, Paranormal Activity, brilliant movie. This actually fooled me. I believed the rumours were when this came out was it was real footage shown by the police, especially in the UK. That's what I remember hearing all around the UK. Everyone who ever talked about this movie was on Facebook, it was on YouTube. That, oh, this Zenith Field has come out, it's got real footage by police. I was thinking, what? No way, they wouldn't show shit like this. And then I, I actually, when I watched it, it fooled me. I was like, no. Especially with the one scene, which, uh, if you haven't seen it, then mute it now. Just thought I'd warn you. Um, but it is, it is the scene where she gets dragged out of the, the bed with the leg and then down the hallway. I was thinking to myself, you know, there is no way in hell that damn muff. Don't worry, problem solved. Right. <laughs> Sorry. In 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 London in the summer, muff decide to just crash your house. Um. Yeah. Paranormal TV. So you fooled me, but brilliant movie. There we go. Paranormal Activity 2, um, this is also a, a brilliant movie, they, I need to get number 3 and 4, but from what I've seen of number 3 and 4, they ruined the story, I prefer 1 and 2, they should have just kept it this way, brilliant, by the way, most of my films are either a pound or 50p, there's only certain ones, I don't usually like spending more than like £2 on a film, but there is certain DVDs which I have spent over a town on just purely due to the fact that I needed to get them to complete sets. 
but they'll come up in certain other videos. But from now on, uh, Paranormal Ascendancy. I don't know if anyone's actually seen this or heard this. It was just a thing from Palmland. But it's based on true events. This this one's actually based on true events. And this is actually pretty good. My mum was disappointed in this one, really. Because she bought it thinking it's just like the other ones, thinking she was going. And then she was like, oh, this is absolute shit. And I was like, nah, nah, this is actually really good. She just. She has low opinions on cheap budget films. Then we have another great classic horror movie from Stephen King The Pet Cemetery. This is a brilliant movie. I don't care what anyone says. That's good. Now, this movie, on the other hand, is absolutely fucking brilliant. Pulse. Pulse, a brilliant movie. I've seen number two. Number two is pretty good, but this is so much better. I watched number two first, which sucked. Because I was thinking, why the hell is everyone dressed in red? And then this explains. This is a fucking brilliant movie. And I, I, as most YouTubers are, you're obsessed with the internet. The internet is kind of like your second home, really. When you go home, you log on, you use it. This shit made me weary of the internet for a very long time. Very, very long time. And I really, really hope to not go through that again. That was a good movie. Then you got Clive Baker's Raw Head Rex. Never watched it. Looks weird. Right, um... This was the triple pack with slip case. Uh, you got The Grudge, The Grudge 2 and The Return. I do not have The Grudge and Grudge 2 in here because I already got them on original DVD so I, I gave the, the DVDs to my friend. Um, but The Return on the other hand is in here and The Return is an absolutely brilliant movie with Sarah Michelle Gellar. Uh, I wasn't expecting it to be that good but it is actually pretty good. This I wouldn't class as a horror, this one would be more of a thriller. But yeah, again, it's the horror slash thriller, so it'd work out. Sanctum by James Cameron. Now, this movie was bloody brilliant. I want, because I'm such a big fan of James Cameron, you know, other than Titanic. But, you know, he did one of the Aliens movies. He did Avatar and this, and uh, I love I love this movie, and I loved Avatar. So, I, I, when I heard that James Cameron did another movie called Sanctum, and I watched it, and I was like, whoa. To pick, okay, people keep suggesting that I get the Blu-ray one though. All my mates used to go, oh, get the Blu-ray, it looks so much better in HD. I don't care how it looks. This movie's going to be brilliant. DVD or oh, hey, Blu-ray, it doesn't matter. Another classical old horror movie by David Cronenberg. Scammers. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of this movie. My, my dad, when I was a lot younger, he suggested that watching this would be a great idea to start getting into horrors because I never really watched them as a kid I was more into other things that you'll see later on during my other collection videos but he was like oh I watch Scanners if you want to be a, if you want to be a man watch this horror movie and I watched it I was like it's not even scary dad he was like what the shit because that scared me he was like it's not scary it's weird uh, this case is battered I need to get new cases because I can't stand the looks of this is as you can see, a little tear in the top there. Yeah, I've got a spare case somewhere. But yeah, Scar. It's a weird ass movie, don't you? There's no point in me I, I, I can't even explain how weird it is. Now, this was a brilliant movie. Seven. Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman. This absolutely brilliant movie. Kevin Spacey, man. What the fuck? I don't like him anyway, but damn. He was a weirdo in this movie. I mean, thinking him as Lex Luthor, you'd think, oh yeah, he's pretty weirdo anyway, but... Come on. Okay, the only thing that ruins this movie is Brad Pitt's acting. I don't care what I was... I know people, like, would say, What are you talking about? Brad Pitt was awesome. He was not. Come on, the ending. What's in the box? What's in the box? You know what's in that box. You already know. You just can't handle it, man. Okay, I have to admit, I wouldn't handle it if, if it was... If it was my wife's head in the box. I'd be doing the same. Well, I wouldn't be going, what's in the box? Like, you son of a bitch! Bang! I wouldn't even waste time asking the question. Now this was a, 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 a horror, this is a Japanese movie I think. Um, but this is a horror that was actually banned in 1983. And it's the uncut edition as well, it is... Vipko's Vaults of Horror. The Shogun Assassin. I watched the beginning of this and I turned it off because I wasn't actually in the mood to watch a Japanese horror. But the beginning was actually pretty funny. 
Uh, I know there's a lot more gruesome bits of in the movie as I'm told. But it's a, yeah, it's a really, it looks pretty cool for an old fashioned Japanese one. Right, next one is I Hate Leonardo DiCaprio. By the way, I can't stand him, but he's got three films that I can stand him in. Is it three? No, four, sorry. Inception. Romeo and Juliet. Blood Diamond and Shutter Island. Shutter Island is my favourite Leonardo DiCaprio movie. Second is Romeo and Juliet. But this this is absolutely brilliant. I watched this movie. Uh, the thing, I don't know if anyone else notices this. I'm hoping someone else notices this. This this is an absolutely brilliant movie. But I think this came out in, if I'm correct, 2010. I remember in 2007, a trailer for this on TV, saying in cinemas, May 1st. And then in 2010, it came out sometime around May. And I was like, huh? And the trailer was released in 2007, so I was like, oh. Yeah, it's a great movie. I suggest you watch it if you haven't seen it. And we've got Sigil, which is a Poundland horror. So I, I never actually watched it, I can't say it. Now, this one, I need to get the new one of this on DVD because this one was brilliant. The new one was actually pretty good. Silent Hill. Um, the the new Silent Hill revelation was absolutely brilliant, but it misses half the story. It skips from the games because the games uh, number two was the dad, number three was the girl in the theme park. But then it goes straight from the mum, which is number one, to number three, which is the girl in the theme park, and it just completely skips a whole story about what was happening. But in the end, I can't complain. Both movies are absolutely brilliant. I love this movie. And the games are pretty cool. Check the games out too if you can. Right. The Sixth Sense, Bruce Willis. Did anyone else at the ending of this movie go, What? What? No way! Because I did. I did. I didn't expect it. No. No, no, no. Uh, this isn't really a horror, but it, it's under that category. But to me, it's actually more of a comedy. Johnny Depp in Sleepy Hollow. It's fucking hilarious. It's not a horror, it's funny. But I do suggest you watch it because you know. Snakes on the plane! Samuel Jackson, what happened to you? I just like how they got Keenan from Keenan and Kellen had to do a kind of cameo. Uh, I think this is more of a. Yeah, this is this is more of a sci-fi, so I'm not gonna actually show this one. Sorry about that. Stigmata. Patricia Arquette, Gabriel Bryan, and Jonathan Price. This movie's brilliant. I love Patricia Arquette. She is brilliant in everything she's in. But this is a great movie. Then we've got Kevin Bacon again. Another person who I'm obsessed with. Uh, is Stereo Echoes. Now I don't know if anyone's seen this and if you have then well done. If you haven't then definitely watch this see if you can find it anywhere. It should be on Netflix. I think it's on Netflix. Or Love Film but if it is watch this movie. It's a definite definite must do. It is so cool. And you got Tomorrow Man. Don't ask me any questions. I don't remember that movie. A proper retro movie that most people haven't seen in a very long time is the Toxic Avenger. Da, 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 da. I, I've watched this once and I can't remember, but all I remember is it was so crap it was good. Then I have Tremors 1 with Kevin B. Tremors 2 with Fred Ward. Tremors 3 with Michael Gross. And Tremors 4, the prequel story with Michael Gross. The Tremors quadrilogy is a really good series. One and three are my favourite of them to make me laugh the most. This one was just it was okay. Now one of my favourite horror movies. It's the two disc unseen and theatrical edition of The Unborn with the I can't show it properly. Oh, don't you dare fall over. 
yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to see, but it's got the 3D hologram in the back. Um, slip case, and then you've got the two disc. But yeah, this is, this is a brilliant movie. If anyone's actually seen The Unborn, it was a great film. I was totally surprised by the ending. I hope they make a number two, actually, because I know, I know it makes no sense they make a number two, but films like that need a sequel. Then you have The Uninvited with the girl from a series of unfortunate events, which was also a mind fuck. Throughout the movie, I honestly believed what I think, like what I thought, and then at the ending it did prove me to be wrong, and I was like, oh, no way. But I like that with a lot of my movies. Towards the end of my movies, I'm always like, oh, no way. What Lies Beneath with Harrison Ford and Michelle Pfeiffer. It was okay. I can't remember much about it. Once I've watched it again, I'll have more to say. Right, next is The Wicker Man with Nicolas Cage. I love this movie, but everyone takes the piss out of that scene with Now the Bruce! Not the bass! Not the bass! Ah! But what is so wrong with the B scene? It's not that bad. I mean, okay, yeah, his acting could be a little better in it, but it's a great movie. Then we have Wolfman. I like this movie. People hated this. I love it. It's brilliant. I've never actually seen the original like Wolfman movies, but I like this. I do like this movie. And the last for horror slash thrillers is a film that shouldn't be classed as either because it was so crap. But it, it's one of those movies where it's so crap you have to own it. The Woman in Black. It's so crap you have to actually own it. And it's worth it in the end. Because it wasn't, it wasn't as bad as people made out to be. But it wasn't exactly as great as I thought it might be. I got my hopes up a little bit too much. But yeah, it's it's okay. It's not too bad, I guess. Right, um... This is my second part, the horror thriller. Uh... I was going to do my... My actions and medieval action movies next. But I might just go straight to my Marvel, DC and other comic book hero DVDs next. Uh, just tell me if you think what one would you rather see next if you watch this video uh, oh, Would you rather see action and medieval action next or comic book action hero? And just if I get more saying one than the other then I'll do that one right, but this is the end I hope you enjoyed please click like subscribe Leave comments ask me questions about other horror movies that I might have seen that I don't own if I have then I'll let you know if I haven't then recommend if you think it's a good movie tell me and I might get it if I see it Right, take care of you all, bye.